Here's a story that you and I aren't going to be surprised by, but I think most people would be surprised by it because this is stuff that um, isn't discussed. The media is going to completely ignore it. Um, you know, print does a decent job, but when you get to, you know, CNN, MSNBC, excuse me, Fox News, ABC, NBC, CBS, they're just beyond pathetic. But take a look at this. USA Today. Breaking. Sophisticated U.S. weapons secretly provided to Syrian rebels quickly fell into the hands of ISIS terrorists, according to a study released today. The arms included anti-tank weapons. The study was funded by Conflict Armament Research, which is an organization funded by the European Union and the German government. Um, you know how many weapons it was that they examined? 40,000. Whoops! Oh, would you, oh, shit. Here we are, this well-intentioned giant, the United States, and oh, we fucking slipped and fell, and all of a sudden, ISIS has uh, anti-tank weapons and uh, 40,000 arms. People don't know about... Listen, almost all of the arms that ISIS had is from us. So there was a story early on in ISIS's reign where they went into uh, Iraq and they were just like, mine. There were fields of, you know, uh, U.S. tanks. They're just like, ours. They just took them. I don't even know how they were able to do that, but they did it. There were, you know, the endless stories of supplies being dropped to Syrian rebels in Syria. A big old thing that they just dropped from fucking planes. And then ISIS fighters found them. They're like, yeah, well, yeah, it was ours. And then now you have this. Now, by the way, why did I say that, hey, you might not be surprised by this. I'm not surprised by this, but others will be. Well, remember this story from a while ago? CENTCOM admits, this is from Vice News. CENTCOM admits U.S. trained Syrian rebels gave a bunch of supplies to Al-Qaeda affiliate. That was in 2015. Now we're learning, oh, and by the way, ISIS has 40,000 weapons from us, including anti-tank weapons. So it was Al-Qaeda at one time, now, now they're like, yeah, ISIS too. Oh, come on, man. And then uh, the other story, which didn't get nearly enough coverage, um, this one. This is from the LA Times. In Syria, militias armed by the Pentagon fight those armed by the CIA. Isn't that amazing? So, we're funding both sides of a civil war. There's civil war going on in Syria. We're like, okay, let's fund the militias on that side and the militias on that side and have the CIA rebels fight the Pentagon rebels. There's, there's not a word that exists that's strong enough to discuss the immense stupidity of that act. And then also, I mean, look, you want to... People in the government love to bring, we can't afford this, can't afford that for the people, fuck. But somehow we can afford endless weapons for both sides of a war. Where, by the way, neither side is a side that we like in, on paper. We say, hey, we don't like the Assad regime because Assad is brutal and evil, but we don't like the rebels either because they're jihadists. So, but instead of staying out like any reasonable person would do, is fucking Greenland? Is, is Greenland funding both sides? No. But we go and let's arm both sides. What the fuck are you talking about? So now we know we funded Al-Qaeda, we funded ISIS. And listen, this is, though it's not discussed in U.S. media, this is not a fucking Alex Jones conspiracy theory. This is a, a matter of historical record. You go back even as far as Ronald Reagan. What did he do? He armed the Mujahideen. The Mujahideen were fighting against the big bad Soviet Union in their own country. So we said, hey, we don't give a shit that these are religious fundamentalists and that this might come back to bite us in the ass. Fund them because we hate the Soviet Union that much that the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And that's what we did. Funded the Mujahideen. They later broke up. You got the Taliban. You got Al-Qaeda. They attack us with the weapons we gave them. And then now in Syria, it's basically the same thing, too. It real, it, it, and when I say the same thing, I mean almost exactly the same thing. Because we're funding the rebels. Why? Because the rebels are fighting Assad. 
and Assad is aligned with Russia. So really we're funding the rebels as a proxy anti-Russia move. Hey, we don't want Russia to have control of Syria and have control in this region, so let's arm the rebels. And honestly, the U.S. doesn't care. If Assad gets toppled and it's replaced by a fundamentalist Salafi government, if it's replaced by Saudi Arabia 2.0, great. Because Saudi Arabia, they're fundamentalists. We arm them, we fund them, but they're on our side and they're religious fundamentalists. So, hey, it's fine. It's fine. Treat women like shit. Say all atheists are terrorists. We don't care. Treat your own people as shitty as you want. You're fundamentalists, but we don't care. We're on your side. Because it's, it's an allegiance, you know, of, of... What's the word I'm looking for? I don't know what the word I'm looking for is. It's uh, mutually beneficial for us to work together for business reasons. It, in Syria, same thing. Hey, we can work together for business reasons. So you want to topple Assad and create a fundamentalist Saudi Arabia 2.0 style government? Fine. Why do you think, whoops, oh, look at that. Our weapons got in the hand of ISIS. Too bad. Because the idea is we don't care how he gets toppled. As long as you topple him. And then we'll, we'll figure out the details later. We'll put in somebody who can hopefully be a puppet to us. But you're playing with fire, guys, and they don't realize... Hey, if you have Al-Qaeda or ISIS fill the vacuum, maybe you can't fucking control them. Maybe you can't control them. Maybe it really is Al-Qaeda-stan. What used to be Syria is fucking Al-Qaeda-stan. You know, Jill Stein got a lot of shit during the election for various reasons. But what's not discussed nearly enough is her plan to bring peace to the Middle East. Which is, it's very simple. Very simple. You ready? The U.S. should stop arming everybody in the Middle East. That's it. That's it. Hard for ISIS to fight when they don't have any weapons. Hard for Al-Qaeda to fight when they don't have any weapons. Hard for Israel to permanently occupy the Palestinians and do illegal settlements um, and do apartheid when they don't have any weapons. Hard for Saudi Arabia to continue to do a genocide in Yemen when they don't have any weapons. So her idea was, uh, you want the old Noam Chomsky line. There's an easy way to stop uh, terrorism. Stop participating in it. That's what that plan is. They don't arm them. That's it. Don't send the arms to the Middle East, then you won't have to either, by accident or on purpose, go, whoops, ah, oh, shit. Look at what happened. That's a damn shame. It looks like we armed Al-Qaeda and ISIS and all these jihadist groups. And we know it's going to come back to bite us, and yes, it already has. And look at General Petraeus. He was open about it. So again, if you think, well, come on, there's no way that this is on purpose, tell, go tell it to General Petraeus, who said we should arm Al-Qaeda because Al-Qaeda will fight ISIS. This, the, this genius's idea is arm the people who attacked us on 9-11 because they'll fight the people who are slightly worse than the people who attacked us on 9-11. Hey, David, you know what'll happen, right? You arm the people who attacked us on 9-11, perhaps they'll attack us again. So, stop arming these people, get the fuck out of the Middle East, and you'd see a giant drop in terrorism. Specifically terrorism that's, um, you know, directed at the West.